Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. The destruction of the middle class in America is underway, and as anyone can see, it is going quite successfully. Let me know if you know somebody who would argue with that statement. In addition to Americans being told that inflation is under control, while goods and services are still 20 to 30 percent above their price levels just a little over a year ago, and U.S. household debt hitting new record highs on a monthly basis, the housing crisis is getting worse by the day. The housing affordability in the United States is at the lowest point since 2007, with the median home in the United States now costing 560 percent of the median income. You heard that right. It's costing 560 percent of the median income in the United States. Soon, the U.S. population will be a nation of renters, not homeowners. A prosperous middle class has been one of the main achievements of the American society. For decades, millions have been leaving their home countries to start a new life in the United States, hoping to achieve what has become a cliche at this point, the American dream. Once the envy of the world, U.S. consumers have slipped into a reality where the poor get poorer and the rich get richer. Income disparity, typically characteristic of developing nations, is now front and center, and there's no end in sight as we are descending into this period of major uncertainty and instability. As the middle class has been slowly shrinking, Americans are increasingly feeling that they're not really experiencing the same quality of life that has defined the American middle class in the past. According to the latest data, U.S. prices and other shelter-related expenses have outpaced incomes, with potential home buyers on the West Coast and Northeast facing the biggest affordability declines in nearly two decades. According to a new report that was just released, the costs of a typical home and this includes mortgage payments, property insurance, and taxes that are typically included in your monthly payment here in the United States. It surged 32% year over year. It is a complete insanity. And in addition to that, it now consumes roughly a third, or 35% to be exact, of the average wage. This is the highest reading since 2007. Among the 589 counties that were analyzed as part of this research, 582, or 99 percent, were less affordable in the second quarter of 2024 than their historic affordability averages. I know many of my viewers are not really based in the United States and may not know what an average worker earns here. So it does vary greatly by state, of course. For example, in the state of New York, the average wage this year in 2024 is $74,870. While in California, for example, that number is $73,220. In Florida, the average wage is $55,980. So, on an average, a third of that income goes towards shelter costs. In more than a third of U.S. markets, ownership costs ate up 43% of average local wages, far above the 28% considered to be a guideline for affordability. The Federal Reserve keeping rates higher for longer means that mortgage rates hover just above 7%, given the lack of opportunity to qualify for a mortgage, American homebuyers find it increasingly more and more challenging to move. It resulted in a shortage of listings, which in turn guaranteed that median home prices remain at a record high. Right now, the median home price in the United States is $420,800. With that being said, the housing affordability crisis is not just the U.S. problem. In New Zealand, for example, it costs 250% more to buy than to rent. In Canada, I know many of you are in Canada, and please comment below and let me know what you think about these numbers. It costs 230% more to buy than to rent. 
In Australia, it costs 150% more to buy than to rent. In the United Kingdom, it costs 100% more to buy than to rent. I primarily focused on home ownership, of course, in this video, but renting is out of reach for many as well. According to a report by the National Low Income Housing Coalition, across the United States, nearly 22 million renter households are housing cost burdened, and nearly 12 million renter households are severely housing cost burdened. This means that they're not able to cover their shelter costs and then pay for other essential items such as food and medical expenses. Many have incomes below the poverty level or work minimum or low wage jobs. In most areas of the United States, a family of four with a poverty level household income can afford monthly rent of no more than $780 assuming the household can manage to spend as much as 30% of its income on housing. Many extremely low-income families can afford far less than that. Individuals with a full-time job paying the federal minimum wage of $7.25 can afford a monthly rent of only $377. To me, that data speaks volumes, as our government sends literally billions of dollars overseas to wage wars that it could easily help resolve in a diplomatic manner without loss of life, U.S. taxpayers are barely making ends meet and are finding it increasingly challenging to afford a home, to afford shelter. That rosy American dream that we all heard so much about is now a thing of the past precisely because the leadership chooses to effectively exploit the U.S. population. These numbers are not new. This is nothing new. It's been getting progressively worse, even though we don't really hear about it in the mainstream media. In fact, we're being told the opposite. Food costs are up. Shelter costs are up. The cost of medical treatment is astronomical here in the United States. Those are the basic needs that are at the core of what we consider quality of life. While through our tax dollars, we're inadvertently supporting militarization and increased division of our society, our quality of life deteriorates with a lightning speed. Comment below and let me know what you think about this. I would love to hear from you as always. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share the video if you found it interesting. Make sure that you follow me on my social platforms. You will find them linked below, as always. And I will see you tomorrow on YouTube or on Rumble. Bye for now.